Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Nittany Lion fans across the world. It's time to wake up. It's time to put on our blue and white. And it's time for the best Penn State football pregame show in the business. So Nittany Lion fans, if you're with me, from Delco all the way up to Erie, from Greene County all the way up to the Poconos, and from Chambersburg North to the Northern Tier through Potter County. It's time to crank up that volume for the obligatory PSU pregame show. And when I say we are, you say... Penn State! All right, now that is the way you start an Ohio State show. Welcome to the obligatory PSU pregame show, Ohio State edition at the We Are In in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. Got some changes to the usual crew. Brandon Noble is not here this week. He is down watching his youngest son graduate from basic training. We'll hear from Brandon later in the show. But sitting in for him is former Penn State offensive lineman Lendon Tengwall. Boots, thanks for having me on. Appreciate you guys. I do, Doug. What thanks. A- you, you are... <clears throat> I must say, doing a very commendable job making the transition from football to media. Really enjoying working with you and glad to have you along as part of this circus today. Uh, so this is a fun one. I, I, th- I'll i tell you what, I don't really watch many other podcasts really at all, but I tune into this one. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to finally be on set here. It is, it's a beautiful spot and like this, this camera work right now, the, we got, you know, just a good time, couple of buddies chatting it up. I didn't know Noble got a couple game balls too. I didn't even really notice that ever. Yeah, it's it, it, it hurts my heart, frankly, to have uh, a Dallas <laughs> Cowboys <laughs> uh, football on this set. But it is what it is. The man had to draw a paycheck. But uh, look, I, I, I don't know if you're lying about watching the show, but if you are, thank you. And if not, I, it does sort of validate what you hear about head, head injuries incurred by, by linemen in football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mike the Mailman, happy Halloween. Yeah, yeah thank you. Happy yeah, Halloween. Yeah. We wore these, uh, Kevin and Horn and I wore these out to Purdue about four or five years ago. Remember that, Kevin? We had a good time out there. I sure do, Mike. We got up at five in the morning to go drink at the bars. That's the Purdue tradition. <laughs> that was great. It was a good time. Yeah, speak of the devil. Again, <laughs> this week through the magic of technology, we've got Kevin Horn on Zoom. And because we keep receipts, Pat Romano, owner and proprietor <laughs> and host of the obligatory pregame show here at the We Are In, our first show of the season before we get into why you're wearing this interesting getup that has nothing to do with Halloween, roll the clip. This year we beat Ohio State. We take them down. Stop. Down. Stop. Here's, here's, no, no, no. No, no, stop. Uh, okay. I guarantee you. I don't gamble. I win money. money. Uh, this is, you're giving me the Joe Namath now. Yeah. All right, man. So it's a put up or shut up time. Now, they, got, they got to back me up. They got to. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to wiggle out. Not at all. I, I think our chances are better right now because if you recall, my frightening game to me was the USC game going out there and we, we did it. We got it done. So now I'm looking at a clean slate like Mike originally pre- uh, predicted. Okay. Right so, through. so Pat, you look like a cross between a coal miner and King from Kung Fu. <laughs> What's going on? Well, most people when I walked in here thought it was a Halloween costume, but it's yes. not. We're actually shooting that uh, film that we had talked about before, Deadlock. Uh, Dustin uh, Fairbanks is the uh, director, and we had people like Kevin Spacey, R. Keith Harris, DJ Qualls from, uh, what was that movie? I can't even remember the movie. <laughs> We're talking road, 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 road trip. Yeah. There it is. Road it's hard going from yeah. football to film and back again. It's a very difficult transition. Yeah. But yeah, I, I played a uh, stunt double for Kevin, and for the last three, four days, it's been pretty grueling. Because we've had this hot stretch and feel that it's wool. This is a wool thing. Yeah, it's it has like, not been November weather. It's like no, well, you were feeling that today. Valley. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's like hot, it's like dude. almost 80 out in State College yeah. on Halloween, yeah. nonetheless. It's, it's, yeah. it's brutal. Whew. But Pat, we appreciate you rolling over here from the set. Yeah, <laughs> it looks as if you're not busy enough because I said, Pat, I, I got the receipts. You gotta come over here. And, and <laughs> you you gave the guarantee. You gave the Joe Namath. So you, you gotta there. stand on business. You it said this, so this game is signed, sealed, delivered, absolutely. Penn State. Absolutely. Woo-hoo. Okay, I, boys. So let, let's talk about a little bit the, the pressure on this game and who's it on. 
There's been back and forth. Some folks say it's on James Franklin because of the record versus Ohio State. Some people say more on Ryan Day because of the stacked roster and the expectations in Columbus this season. Glenn, what do you think? Yeah, I think, if funny enough, it is still Ryan Day because they already have a loss. And where we sit right now as, you know, Penn State, in terms of the vibes and how you view James Franklin's career and Drew Aller, this game means everything. In terms of us and the final goal this year being the national championship, this game means really nothing, if I'm going to be honest. Not, you know, not nothing, but if you just look at the scenarios, if we lose this game, we're, uh, barring any huge upsets, we're 11-1. and one. We're probably still hosting a home playoff game, meaning that we're five through uh, eight. So, and that you're in a good world there. But you win this, you know, you win this. You end up going to the Big Ten Championship. And then win or lose to Oregon, if you beat Oregon in the Big Ten Championship, you're the number one seed in the nation. Yeah. And then even if you lose to Oregon, you still find yourself five through eight in the playoffs. So as much as I, I, it means everything to, yes, I, I'm tired. I don't want to see Marcus Allen blocking a kick anymore. I mean, I've seen it since I was a recruit. I was there for it. And then, you know, here we are still having beat them however many years later. Uh, and it, so many times we're right there. And we just haven't been able to get over the hump. And I think looking at some of the matchups that we have over Ohio State, and it's like, okay, we're, we're kind of favorable here. Okay, I like our odds here. And I'll be honest, most times I don't remember ever doing that with Ohio State. I remember saying, oh, my God, look at the guys they have at that position and that position and that position. And more specifically, their offense and defensive line are, are banged up. Uh, and their D-line isn't just producing how Ohio State's defensive line you know, normally is. We know Joey, Nick, Bosa, Chase Young, what he did to yeah. us. I got to talk about this for a second. I, I brought this up in my podcast. We know what, what Chase Young did to Will Fries for like two or three years straight, the right tackle here. Will Fries is now having a better pro career than Chase Young is. Wow. He's, yeah. he's been starting for the Colts point. at right guard yeah. for like three or four years now. And Chase Young is what, on his third team? Yeah. I'm just saying, I just want to put it on perspective. If you remember, I'm sure many of you fans were cursing Will Fry's name. I think that was after 2018 when Chase just had like two and a half sacks against us at Ohio State. When we, when they were. 18 was here, but no, yeah. Will, then it was Will 17. Had, yeah, then it was okay. 17. Will had and a tough day against them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you got pressure on your face, but saying all that to say, I don't think there's going to be as much pressure. Now, there's a couple other factors. Anthony Donk has banged up at right tackle, so we may see Nolan Rucci. But overall, this pass rush for Ohio State isn't the same. They had zero sacks versus Oregon. And then uh, against Nebraska, I you know watched the tape many times over. They weren't getting pressure with just rushing their four normal defensive linemen. They had three sacks, all three sacks. They blitzed five or more guys. Horn, I, I, I know where Mike the Mailman is on this. I am not used to being surrounded by this much optimism on the set. So, uh, so, so help me out here. <laughs> get, get counterbalance a little bit. Well, funny enough about Will Fry, let's start there. I, I remember uh, the year he came back for his senior year was like the first year that uh, all the players in college football who were juniors that were coming back for their senior year put out uh, statements on Twitter saying I'm coming back or whatever. I remember Will Fry's was the first Penn State player to put this long statement out saying he's coming back. I'm like, well, no shit, buddy. And then it turns out he ends up having one of the uh, a phenomenal NFL career. And he's like, it's been awesome to see. Um, well, you're quite oh, highest the meaning of this game. I mean, it's the least meaningful quote-unquote Penn State Ohio State game since 2016 uh certainly it's not an elimination game for the first time ever it's not an elimination game so by definition the pressure's off I mean I've I'm as least nervous about this game as I I've been in a long long time it's the, it's a blessing and a curse of the 12 team playoff right I mean on, and on one hand I think this game should matter I think this game should be an elimination game I think we should have you know our our guts in our throats the whole game saying this do or die this win this game you go this is the way you win the national championship but because of the tv tv networks there's 12 teams now you can lose and host a home playoff game i put that on twitter and i got shit on by probably 50 people being like you're an idiot this matters for recruiting this matters for perception all that is true i didn't say it was meaningless right you win this game and you're in the, you're, you're probably number one in the country you're getting number one votes at least, and that the last Penn State's never gotten number one votes. Like it, it, it's been, I, I can't remember the last time they've gotten number one votes. It's had to be thirty years. Um, and that's probably right. Yeah, it's probably nineteen ninety nine was the last uh, time. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine, right? So that's that would be awesome. But you can still lose, and and the consolation is you're you're probably playing Boise State or, or Indiana or someone at home in Beaver Stadium in December, assuming you take care of business as double digit favorites the rest of the way. So. Yeah, uh, it, it is. Obviously, I'm, I'm hyped for the game. I think 
like Landon said, this is a sort of a vulnerable Ohio State team as as relative as that goes with for Ohio State teams. You know, their offensive line is 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 fairly injured. They're on their third string in a couple of those spots. And I think Penn State will be pretty effective in shutting down the run, just like Nebraska was last weekend. But uh but ultimately it's it's uh as long as it's not an elimination game, which it's not. How can you say it's it's more meaningful than any of the games in the last decade that we've played the Buckeyes? So I feel it's, it's better for my mental health, I'll put it that way, going into this weekend. Yeah, definitely better for my mental health as well. I, I feel like this is a house money game for all involved. I understand the expectation and hope inside the building that you're going to compete and win every game. I know the weight on Coach Franklin because of his record against Ohio State, but I have maintained all along that this season – and this team is ultimately going to be judged in the postseason. And in terms of Penn State's playoff hopes, everything is still in front of us, irrespective of the outcome of this game. So I walk into it very calm and, 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 and sanguine. What about you, Pat? I'm always pumped for games. I mean, I know this. if you ever stop by my tailgate. Oh, I stopped by recently. Yeah, did I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun. Uh, you know, we, Those we, two things are connected. We, right? we yeah, tailgate yeah. harder than the other team plays. That old saying, we do that. I like that. And, uh, I'm just looking forward to it. One of the only things that really, I don't even want to say it's been a disappointment to me, but we've yet to see it yet, where when I was guaranteeing a lot of this stuff was going to be with Fleming, you know? And he did come through for the game that scared me. So sure did. he picked that one up, which is great. But I would love to see him have a, a breakout game this week and really, you know, show his old team, what he's made of. Yeah, I, I think that I, that's where we need it from is our wide receivers. I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, this is still, you talk about them being a little banged up. Maybe their pass rush isn't as good. Still the best defense we've seen up to this point by far. It's still the best pass rushers we've seen up to this point by far. Uh, so I, I think our wide receivers are going to have to win a little bit. I mean, Tyler Warren is still going to have an impact, but now you have an Ohio State team that has true athletes over there that are good players mm-hmm. and a little bit better of a defensive coordinator than we've seen as well with Jim Knowles. So I think he's going to find a way to try to minimize Tyler. You can't take Tyler Warren out of the game just because they put him at tight end, slot wide receiver, quarterback, fullback, center, tackle, (laughs) anything you name Tyler Warren is lined up in that position. So, you know, it's going to be hard for them, but that's where we need Trey Wallace to come up. That's where we need Julian Fleming to come up. And I, you know, think back to West Virginia, we, we went at Trey Wallace. I mean, we gave him a couple jump balls. It was like, okay, there, this is a great product when we, when we throw the ball to Trey Wallace. And we kind of stopped doing it. I mean, can you think of a moment where we gave Trey Wallace a, a jump ball, 50-50, go up and get it. And we, we do it twice at West Virginia. One is a touchdown before half. And then Drew does it at another point, And there was a defensive pass interference against West Virginia. So I, I, you started to see it last week. Uh, he had six receptions and was really starting to kind of get involved in the offense continue to get Trey Wallace involved because I do think he is the most talented wide receiver out of the bunch that can, you know, be that number one guy. Uh, but I, I do want to pose a question real quick. What is success in the playoffs for the season? So if we, I mean, where you guys sit is, is one win. And then let's say we, you know, we get matched up, I don't know, Georgia, and then we lose. Is that a, you know, is that a successful season? One playoff win and then a loss to like a good sec team or they'll have the first round by. Well, they won the Big Ten and had the first round by, so we yeah, this, won't have to worry about that. Stuff. Does. Wow, this is all right. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. As far as, as they just put out the bowl locations for uh, playoffs, if, if if the Big Ten champion gets the bye, they will likely go to the Sugar Bowl after the bye in the first round, which Penn State has not been in a long, long time. So I would be excited for that. As it stands, they would go to the Rose Bowl if they win uh, uh, the Big Ten. Uh, so, I, I mean, I. It, the, the question is interesting. It, it depends on the matchup. We've talked about this in the show. It depends on the matchup, right? If you're playing Boise State in the first round of Beaver Stadium as 11 and 1 and you lose to Boise State, well, you got a problem. If you're, going, if you're going down to Athens, Georgia to play Georgia as, you know, 10 point underdogs and you lose, well, who can blame them? I think it's entirely matchup dependent. Just making it, frankly, after years and years of heartbreak would be um, a, a step in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. Well, what, what years we, so we would have made it in what? So 16. Yep. 17, 18, 19, 22, yeah. and 23, we would have made the playoffs if it was a 12 team playoff. Yep. So that's a lot of that's a lot of playoffs that James Franklin would have been in. Yeah. Now a lot of times it would have been as a road team in the first round. Right. So you ask me what how I define success in the postseason. Uh, finish in the top eight 
And if you don't win the Big Ten, so you don't secure one of those first round buys, win your first game. So host mm -hmm. and, and, and win a playoff game. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm not one of these fans who says you have to win a national championship or even play for one for it to be considered a, a quote unquote successful season. Now, as, as the season rolls on, we'll see what happens this weekend. Maybe that moves the needle a little bit. If you're going to be the number one team in the country, winning one round of the playoffs is, is maybe not enough. But as I sit here right now, as somebody who's just been waiting to see Penn State go to the postseason, I want to see them at least get out of the first round as one of the top eight seeds in the tournament. And then, as Kev said, it really is, it's matchup dependent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do like the fact that there seems to be more parity in college football this year yeah. than normal. There's not one or two dominant teams that I feel like I don't know that I've watched a team this year that I think if we see them in a winner-take-all scenario in the postseason, that I feel like it's a hopeless cause for Penn State. Not one team. Not even Indiana? <laughs> not, not, not even Indiana. The way well, they're scoring. <laughs> can we talk about that? So from my understanding, if Indiana beats, I guess, Ohio State and Michigan, right? Uh, they still have them on the schedule. But let's just say Oregon, Penn State, and Indiana all end up undefeated, which is possible. Yes. I, from my understanding, so is it the is it the person that scores the most points against Ohio State, essentially? Yeah, so all of the tiebreakers would end up coming down to a margin of victory against common opponents, and it would come against that Ohio State game, and Oregon only beat by them one. by one point. So, yeah. If that unlikely scenario unfolds, nope. you get a Penn State versus Indiana in Indianapolis wow. and undefeated Oregon sitting home. <laughs> And that's no problem. They'll play away Ohio State by a lot more than Indiana. And you're right, I don't think Indiana will, Indiana will do it anyway, but uh, okay, doesn't Mike. matter. Is Mike always this optimistic? Uh, I, this is mild for him, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to issue a little spoiler here for yes. the audience. Yes. You're going to want to watch this Trends to Treasure segment coming up because we do have the Penn State-Ohio State game in there. But no, no heart betting, right? This is an actual trend. That's right. And you're saying take the Nittany line. It's only four and a half points. Right. And so I feel like if Penn State's going to cover, best way to do it is just just win the game. Yep. Right. And you know how I like home dogs. I, I know it. <laughs> Mike loves the home puppies. So trends to treasure. Take it to the bank. Watch, and we'll be back after this. Hi, everybody. Mike the Mailman with another edition of Trends to Treasure. I understand we're getting a lot more viewers, so I want to remind the new viewers that uh, the trends are against the spread. So every game I give you is against the spread, okay? First up, we have Air Force at Army. Army is four and one in the last five games, so the play here is Army. Next up, we have Louisville at Clemson. Clemson is six and zero oh the last six games, three and zero oh the last three home games, so the play here is the Clemson Tigers. Next up, we have Penn State versus Ohio State. Penn State is 6-2 in the last eight games, 4-1 against them at home in the last five games. So the play here is the Penn State Nittany Lions. That Penn State Ohio State is a, is a trend, not a hard pick, it's a trend. Cover by winning, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Cover by winning, yeah, that's funny. No hard stuff, no. The last game this weekend, we have Duke versus Miami of Florida. Duke is 3-6 in the last nine games, 1-4 in the last five away games. The play here is Miami of Florida. And that's it for another edition of Trends and Treasure. Remember, bet with your head and not with your heart. Go get them. This segment of Obligatory is brought to you by Concierge Medical Associates. Whether you're a weekend warrior or elite level athlete, let Dr. Stephen Murphy and his board certified sports medicine specialists keep you at the top of your game. Schedule an in-person or remote consultation at conciergemedical.ai. Good job, Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome back. We are in. It's obligatory PSU pregame show. We got Kevin in cyberspace, mailman as always, Pat Romano and Landon Tengwall sitting in for those guys. Brandon Noble, we'll be hearing from him later. Let's break down the game itself. You mentioned, Landon, that Ohio State was not able to get to Dylan Gabriel. A quarterback who can move around pretty well. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that's the health of Drew Aller and the possibility of Bo Perbula having to step in for him in this game. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I, there was videos of Drew at practice Wednesday night, and it looked 
promising to say the least, I would say. I mean, diving in drills, jogging from, from field to field. You think there's you know, maybe a little gamesmanship there uh, on the part know, of the staff? I, I think a little bit. I think they, you know, they knew that the media was obviously there taking videos. And, you know, there's there's certain things. And just real quick, from an injury standpoint, rundown, Drew looked like a full participant. Anthony Donk at right tackle kind of looked limited. And then uh, Deny Dennis Sutton was not seen at practice. Uh, so that, that definitely hurts the defensive line a little bit for sure. Um, but yeah, talking about the, the Bo and Drew situation, and here's what I say about this. What Drew has done this season, uh, you know, think West Virginia. He rushed for three or four first downs on a, on a third down. I mean, just converting with his legs. But then think about USC, that, that, that drive when it was 20 to 27, fourth and 10, and, so, and Drew has someone come free right up the middle. He evades them, and he actually tucked the football, evaded him, untucked the football, kept his eyes downfield, which is him growing up, and then fires away to Julian Fleming, converts for a first down. If Drew Aller cannot still be that guy to a certain extent, I don't need him 100% because no one's 100% at this point in the year. Yeah. But if he can't be a, a, you know, a semblance of that guy, then don't play him. If he, because that is what he, he, I don't think it's been talked about enough the way he has extended plays with his legs while keeping his eyes downfield this year. Uh, and so if he can't do that, I don't think you play him. And I, I think, you know, you look at the rest of the schedule, you don't want to risk injuring Drew Aller. You know, I think you kind of coast the rest of the way. You have a, a Maryland that's pretty bad, a Purdue that's really bad, but you have an at Minnesota that's a little bit scary. And I think that's kind of the reason why, I'm going to be honest, I think Drew could have maybe went in Wisconsin in the second half, but they said, hey, we have Ohio State next week. Why, let's, I think we can, let's see if Bo can get this done. I think that was the thought process. Yeah. And <coughs> got to see Bo in an environment where it wasn't getting taken out for a quarter at a time. Because, yeah, I think if you're Bo Perbula going in the game, I'm thinking, all right, I got, I got one play and I might not come back in for another quarter and a half. I got to make the most of it. And there's so much pressure. And you saw Bo struggle a little bit at the beginning. But because he knew he had the whole second half, he was able to get comfortable. We saw what Bo Perbula can do with Andy Kotonicki helping him out with some play calling. It was really exciting. So, uh, and I think there's a lot of optimism. And uh, it's surprising there's not, you know, if you would have told me in week one, hey, Drew Aller's going to be questionable heading into Ohio State, and there's not that much panic in, in the fan base, I would have said, what? What are you talking about? So I think that shows how much confidence everybody does have in Bo Perbula from what he did against that Wisconsin defense. But as I said, Wisconsin defense, very different than this Ohio State Buckeyes defense. For sure. Although I, I, I do think, Kev, that what makes the difference is not just confidence in Bo Perbula, it's, it's confidence in Andy Kotelnicki too, don't you think? Yeah, and, and Landon, you've been a big advocate on your show about uh, you know Bo playing once or twice a series. It sort of throws the offense off rhythm a little bit, whereas he gets to give Bo, hey, you're the quarterback, you're QB1 for the whole game. And Koto Nicky can scheme for that. And really, Bo, I think, schemes better for what Koto Nicky's offenses have historically looked like. Uh, you can actually have quite a bit of success. So, uh, yes, obviously at Wisconsin, after that first Bo drive, when there was a delay game and uh, they're running the mesh or whatever and dropped the ball, I'm like, well, great. I should just leave this game. Here we go. This is another classic Penn State, Iowa situation. But then he obviously proved everyone wrong and and uh, and and had a great half and had a better half than Drew had in that first half against Wisconsin. So yes, obviously it's you you, you want Drew, but uh, I'm frankly more worried about uh, Anthony Donko uh, or, or similarly worried about. I don't want to overstate it because I mean he's had a phenomenal season and the drop off between him. I mean Nolan Rucci is about as good of a player as his dad was a Penn State trustee. Look it up. Uh, I don't know. This, I, I, no <laughs> is this what you give it, Kevin? <laughs> no, <laughs> every week. <laughs> no offense to no, no offense to Nolan, uh, but but the drop off there I think is <laughs> steeper than uh, perhaps any other sort of backup position, and and so I worry about that, especially given the dogs that Ohio State has on the offensive line. Yeah. yeah, real quick, just, just to give you guys a quick stat, running behind Anthony Donk at right tackle weeks one through four. Sorry, look at Bucci. Sorry, kid. Yeah, I know it's weeks, coming. Weeks one through coming. four, running behind the right tackle. Anthony Donk, you're averaging about eight and a half yards per carry. Since he got injured at UCLA, a mixture of Nolan Rucci and a hurt Anthony Donko, they're averaging about 1.5 yards right. per carry. So you're going from 8.5 yards per carry when going behind the right tackle to 1.5. Big difference. A little bit of that is Nick Singleton as well being injured, but I'm just putting that out there. Anthony Donk, I had great job touching on that, Kevin. Sounds like he might watch the show, Kev. Is that is that true? Do you tune into the show weekly? 
That means a lot. <laughs> but no, but seriously, it is. It, I watch, oh. I watch, I watch it every, every, every episode, brother. I'm a subscriber. Oh, my God, my God. But no, but seriously, that is, I, I, I think the importance of Anthony Donka playing, it's, it's going to be big time against, like I said, it's, a, it's a pass rush that isn't as good as we normally know Ohio State, but still better than what we've seen. I think the most important number on Saturday is four, four, one quarter, two quarters, three. All four quarters. They got to play all four quarters. I mean, they have. To, I mean, the other games we've known them as a second half. Yeah, yeah, but that's right. Yeah, yeah. But they all been known as a second half team. But we, they can't do it. They can't do that this Saturday. They have to go out right from the get go and show them what they got. And we'll go. Home, we'll go home early. Mm. You're not going to tailgate, Mike? Always. Okay. <laughs> okay. So along lot. those lines, when you said four, I thought you were talking about the spread. No, no, well, no. <laughs> no really along those lines, let's get out of this segment with, with each one of us kind of giving us what you see as a key to the game if Penn State is going to pull off the W. And, Mike, I'm going to start with you. Well, you know, uh, during the Wisconsin game, I noticed that the Wisconsin quarterback had a quick release. And so it didn't allow Penn State to get into that much on him. Well, I think Penn State might might and should do the same. If Ohio State is supposed to be a, as good defensive lineman as, as they said, that he might have to do the same, go to the short little passes and let it work that way. I think that's, a, to me, that's the key. Well, especially if Drew Aller is going to be the quarterback. Because yeah. 100%, he will not be totally healthy in right. that game. There's, exactly. a, there's just no way. Yeah. All right, Mr. Guarantee, give Mr. me a key guarantee. to the guarantee. Uh, always a key is protecting the ball. You know, don't get the turnovers, get the turnovers, go get the ball. Yeah. You know, that, and, and even like, you know, no bad penalties. Because that, that hurts you just as bad as a turnover oftentimes, you know? So if we can play nice and clean like that and, you know, maintain the turnover ratio, we'll be all right. Yeah, I got to say, I got the honor to watch the game of Booch last weekend and, like, the pacing back and forth was the greatest part yeah. about it. Oh, yeah. I yeah. really I really enjoyed that. Uh, and and, and Booch, if you can believe it, I am way, way, way calmer than I used to be. Oh, watching games. Booch oh, in the I corner, it's, yeah. it's over. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm right there with them. I think all of us were there after that first bow drive, and then it came yeah, back, it and it was like, okay, hold on, we're in a good place. Yeah. I will say, Pat, I love the point about the penalties. There was just stuff to clean up. Uh, there was, uh, you know, obviously that 12 men on the field Ugh. on third and goal at the goal line in week, what, eight? You cannot have that. That is ridiculous. You've had two bye weeks. That just can't happen. It wasn't like someone running off the field. They thought they were right, and they had 12 men on the field. There's a couple other false starts. You just, you know, you can't be messing that stuff up. I will say one shout out to Koto Nikki. He's making sure that we're going on two, you know, so he's he's mixing up the cadence. And I'll tell you, we ain't, we ain't do that with Yersich. And then defensive linemen, and the reason why you mix it up because the defensive linemen start to get a beat. Oh, yeah. oh they're only going on one? Right. Oh, I'm teeing right. off into this dude. Right. And so, you know, he, he's doing a good job of kind of slowing everybody down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, my, my key's to victory. I think Penn State wins this game in the trenches on both sides of the ball. Ohio State is really banged up on the offensive line, and then on the defensive line, just not the same. They are on their third string left tackle that also might be their left guard moved out there. Um, so you, you got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, that you don't really know, but either way, Ohio State's going to have a makeshift offensive line against Penn State. I think where Penn State loses this game, if they do not control the Ohio State skill players, Travion Henderson, uh, Judkins, you know, getting the ball out in space, quick throws to Mecca, Buka and Jeremiah Smith, that can hurt you if you're Penn State. That is where we've gotten burned in the past against Ohio State is letting their playmakers I mean, look, at the end of the day, their, their wide receivers are better than our quarterbacks. We got to call it how it is. This is a game that you miss K.J. Winston big time. Some young guys got to step up in day-day lane. Uh, let's see if, if, if Terry Smith and, and Dex are up to the challenge. And to your point, Pat, they're, they're going to get some points. So you want to look for either a big special teams play or a turnover to give the offense a short field or just put points on the board like they did last week at Wisconsin. Kev, give me a key to Penn State beating Ohio State. Yeah, exploiting off uh, Ohio State's offensive line, which is, I guess, cliche to say, win it in the trenches, right? Uh, despite the fact that uh, the sack numbers are, are down and the, and the counting stats are down for Penn State's defensive front, they are doing pretty well in a stat called Havoc, which is arguably more important than all of those. Havoc is essentially percentage of defensive plays where you cause a tackle for a loss, a pass breakup, forced fumble, et cetera, et cetera. Momentum changing plays. And they're top 10 in the nation in Havoc. You know, Ohio State's offensive line, their best player on their team was possibly Josh Simmons who's going to probably go into first round of the NFL draft next year, he gets hurt. They put in their backup, Zen Mikowski, he gets hurt. Uh, and then they had to move over Donovan Jackson, and they had starting some sophomore who sucks uh, on the other side of the line. 
So being able to exploit that and not give Will Howard time to pass, right? Because between Jeremiah Smith and Amika Buka, the two wide receivers that Ohio State has, I mean, those two, the gap in wide receiver talent between Ohio State and Penn State is probably the biggest gap of any position group on the field. You can't give him time to throw to those guys because they will get open and they will exploit us. So being able to, to get to Will Howard, not saying sack him, but just not give him time in the pocket to find Smith, who's going to haunt Penn State for the next three seasons because he's a freshman, or Abuka, who's probably going to leave this year, thank God, um, I think is the key to that. And fortunately, Ohio State's best lineman's out, so there'll, there'll be more of an opportunity than I think there usually is to get in the backfield this weekend. Well, I'm going to wrap up with my key to the game, and it's kind of going to key off what Kev said about taking advantage of Ohio State's offensive line and shutting down the run game. If you can do that, you can make them one-dimensional, and then you've got to get pressure on Will Howard, the quarterback. Don't let him sit back there and, and pick the secondary apart, thrown to those great wide receivers. And to me, ultimately, I am going to put random the focus number on generator is brought to you by the good folks at Anti Fragile Brewing Company. Anti Fragile is the play. official beer nice supplier of fueling the obligatory pregame show. Anti Fragile well, Brewing is incredible. Beer. We one all of the enjoy and recommend. Again, and check out the Moody Culture Kombucha and fill up on Uncle John's Jaws. You can get nice production. Check them out when out you're in Happy Valley at 324 this is East Devon Calder J. Way Thomas's or anytime to at antifragilebrew.com. If those guys can occupy blockers and create one-on-one -on -one situations for the edge rushers, that's when you can get to Howard and you can make him uncomfortable. Chip really has not used him as a runner too much this season. So even if they try to incorporate that year, that this week to throw Penn State off, mm -hmm. I think it, it's all about collapsing the line from the inside out. So we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back on the other side, we're finally going to predict this thing in Random Number Generator. So stay tuned. Random Number Generator is brought to you by the good folks at Anti-Fragile Brewing Company. Anti-Fragile is the official beer supplier fueling the obligatory pregame show. Anti-Fragile brews incredible beer we all enjoy and recommend. And check out their Moody Culture Kombucha and fill up on Uncle John's John's Cheese Steaks. Check them out when you're in Happy Valley at 324 East Calder Way or anytime at antifragilebrew.com. All right, it is time. Nittany Lions are 7-0. and They're number three in the nation. Half of the college football media world is in Happy Valley you're this right. weekend. And it's a battle of three versus four. Mm -hmm. We're going to randomly generate numbers and predict this one. Kevin Horn, go. Chris, the... 2017 Penn State Ohio State game where Penn State was up 35 to 20 in the fourth quarter and lost 39 38 and the 2018 Ohio State game where Penn State was up 26 to 14 in the fourth quarter and lost 27 to 26 those games um have both changed me as a fan and frankly changed me as a person that is the way I <laughs> am why I am having sat through both of those two games and watched both of those games mismanaged which robbed all of us of so many wonderful memories like that you win one of those two games or both of those two games which you should have uh the nil problem is probably fixed the perception problem is fixed none of these arguments we have about our coach exist because they get over the hump but they didn't do it they didn't do it um and i will never again pick penn state to beat ohio state until we finally do it again because of those two games and uh, the way that they have affected me both uh, as a person and as a fan. So I'm going to pick Ohio State 34 to 24 and pray that I am wrong. And then I will be free again next year and in following years to again pick Penn State to beat Ohio State. But until they do it again, Chris, and by the way, you and I promised each other that we would not pick Penn State to beat Ohio State until they do it again. Uh, I, I can't, I can't do it and I won't do it, but I hope I'm wrong. Can I just jump in with a question? Because I've never heard this out of Kevin before, and I want to hear the reaction. What was your thoughts on the fourth and five run in 2018? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh-oh. You don't want to hear this. It, it was uh, among the worst moments of my life. Uh, uh, my grandparents dying, uh, you know, <laughs> breakups when you're a freshman in college or in high school, um, you know, the loss of a friend, a loved one, uh, tragic, severe car accidents, hospital days. That, uh, that is up there. Among those events, uh, unfortunately, I've had a pretty blessed life, but um, but among the top five worst moments of my entire life. Thank you for asking, Landon. I 
I, thank you for answering that. I, I just asked, I actually, I did break down that play on my Twitter at Lynn and Tangwall. Go check me out uh, on all platforms at Lynn and Tangwall, breaking down some cool stuff. But I, I've started a series where I break down throwback plays. And actually, the run was kind of there. It was there for Miles. Miles Stop. Sanders. I'm back. tired. I, no, no, right. no, no, no. I've heard that too many times. Listen, we're giving our audience PTSD. <laughs> all right, let's I, get back I, to this Ke week. Kevin already said. Kevin already said everything, including the fact that we have this blood oath between us. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and randomly number, uh, randomly generate the number. I've got the Buckeyes winning 31 to 17. Uh, Brandon Noble, as I said, did record his score prediction. Let's go to it now. What's going on, guys? Just uh, sitting here in the Philadelphia International Airport. Completely forgot to do this last night before I left, so here I am watching all the people walk by. So getting ready to fly down to Georgia, looking forward to the weekend, get to see my son graduate from boot camp, uh, and then uh, hopefully get to watch the Nenny Lions beat the Buckeyes. I do not feel like this is the Buckeye team that we've seen in the past. Uh, I definitely don't think it's the Buckeye team they think they paid for, and I feel like this is an opportunity for James to get over the hump and for the program to get over the hump, right? We haven't had a lot of success against these guys. So I think this is an opportunity to get the win. Uh, I think it's going to be a good football game. I think, uh, you know, obviously Will Howard has some motivation and uh, they've got some talented wide receivers, but I don't think they're very good up front. I think their line is really struggling. And I think we'll take advantage of that on the defensive side of the ball. I don't know how the quarterback thing is going to play out. I don't really think it matters. I feel pretty good about Cole Mickey uh, doing the right thing and giving me a good position. So it's still going to be a good football game. I do think it's going to be a close one. So I'm going to go 28, 24, Nittany Lions, and uh, I'll be up there for the wideout. All right. Okay. Good job, Noble. I, if people are mad at me for picking Ohio State, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't believe in jinxes. Maybe I'm trying to reverse jinx something. I don't know. Pat, I know you've got Penn State winning because you already guaranteed it. <laughs> guaranteed it. And it's going to be an easy win this time because uh, our crowd's going to be amazing as we always are. I think we're going to beat them like 42 to 17 or 24, somewhere in that range. What would happen to State College if that actually if that came to fruition? Well, the good Can I thing, tell you one thing real quick that I won't do? The last time when we beat them, I jumped on the field and found out that I'm too fat to climb back out. I had to stand in line <laughs> to leave the field. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay over the railing and scream a little bit on that one. The the good thing is that the game's being played at noon, so it won't be dark outside. And the students can immediately flock to Beaver Canyon. That's that's probably good from a a, a civic order standpoint. But Wait, can I, can I just get a recap? What was what was the uh, environment of State College afterwards after that 2016 game? Oof. Oh, Kev, you were downtown, were you not? Huh. Well, we had a lot of clients the next day. Um, that's the, the blessing and the curse of a noon game, right? You win, you get the whole day to get drunk and have fun, and just it's the best day ever. You lose, then you're just going to mope around all day and watch every other team play, and uh, you know you don't get that reprieve. But no, I don't. I don't think that. I'm not going to use the word riot. I, I I don't think that there'll be because of the noon game, sort of a downtown uh, uh, gathering, if you will. But uh, but there could be. I hope there is. Landon Tangwell, thanks for joining us today. Keeping Noble's seat warm. We appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. Randomly generate some numbers. Yeah, I'll go uh, 20 to 17. Penn State's going to take it. <laughs> And I'll go a walk off Ryan Barker game winning field goal. Yeah. I think I love I, it. I think we're gonna have a it's tough to say. I have this weird I don't want to say this, but I just have this weird feeling that Drew's gonna start and not finish. I'm just gonna be honest. But I think there's going to be a mixture. I think Bo Perbula is gonna play more. If Drew starts, I still think Bo's gonna play more than he has in the past. Uh, but that, I'm going 2017. I, I just think there's too many just just problems in this Ohio State roster. They don't look like the same team as they have in recent years. And I don't think Will Hart, Will Howard is really that good of a quarterback. Going to be some big time trouble in paradise in Columbus, Ohio. Mm. If that happens, Mike, the mailman, take us out. You know, I, I've seen Penn State play all the games. I've seen Ohio State play three three games. I don't, I don't see what the problem is. I, I, you know, they're talking about this guy's good, this guy's not good. It doesn't matter. Penn State's a much better team. I, I, although I will admit uh, that Ohio State does have pretty much the same kind of talent. Uh, and probably as quick as Penn State. But I think Penn State is really up. So they have the they have the same talent. And they're as quick as Penn State. It's yeah. just that we're the much better team. Oh no so question. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I think Penn State. Uh, Penn State win this by thirteen. No problem. You so heard I'm it here first. We we got Joe Namath. And dressed as Kevin Spacey down on one end of the table. we got Mike the Mailman in a Nittany Lion costume on the other. They're both guaranteeing it. Listen, 
if you had one shot, one opportunity, and you had to listen to me and Kevin Horn or Mike the Mailman and Pat Romano dressed as King from Kung Fu, I, I think I know which pairing I would recommend you listen to. Tang Wong, thanks so much for joining us. I, 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 again, as always, I don't know why you watch this show, but you do, and we're glad you're along for the ride. God willing, we will be back next week talking about the 8-0 Nittany Lions. So Penn State, go out and get it done. Until we talk to you next, take care of yourselves and each other. We are Beat Ohio State. Woo! Let's go.